Hi, I'm John Alexandrov, and I'm here with Olympic gold medal champion Dan Jansen. Dan, it's great to see you again. We've seen each other a few times over the last couple weeks, yeah. and uh, what you did last night was very inspirational. For those uh, watching in right now, uh, we're at a Kivana convention here in Orlando, Florida, and you, Mike, uh, Aruzioni, Bonnie Blair, got up and just gave a tremendous speech to the, uh, to the troops here. You really said something that struck me last night. You mentioned that you won 46 was World, a, Cup. World yeah. Cup races as a speed skater. Yes. You're an Olympic gold medal champion. I think people were really drawn to you last night because of the story you told and the film that you showed about you going through some adversity and tragedy leading up to winning the gold medal. So let's, let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah, I had, uh, I had a long road to my gold medal. I had a lot of success, as you just said, um, in everything else. But with the Olympics would come around and, and things would happen, and, and uh, namely the, the, the most known one was from 1988 when, when my sister passed away right. on, the, on the morning of my race, and uh, I fell in both my races at Olympics. And, and from then, my story just kind of kept building and building, and I went to a, the next Olympics was supposed to win and, and didn't again. Right. My last Olympics uh, was supposed to win the 500 meters, and I didn't. And then uh, and finally on the, the 1,000 meters, the race I wasn't favored in, I had set a world yeah. record and one goal. Well, Dan, you know, I think a lot of people can relate that, you know, we go through these trials and tribulations in life, and you also didn't mention that you also you were actually in four Olympics yes. because uh, you were, came in fourth place, I believe you said in your first Olympics, right. and you were thrilled to be in fourth, yeah. and you thought they were going to throw you a parade and That's all this right. great That's stuff. Right. But you know, people I think can relate to the fact that there are times in our lives where things seem to be going so well, and we're working hard, we're doing all the right things, yet the result doesn't seem to come the way that we yeah. want to. How did you handle that? Well, you know, I think the biggest thing for me was I just um, I. A lot of it was the way I was brought up. I, had, uh, I was the youngest of nine kids, and so my parents always taught us, you know, to to compete with class and integrity and dignity. And win or lose, you congratulate your opponent, and if they beat you, they beat you. And um, and I was always pretty good at sort of taking life as it comes, but but it doesn't just happen. I think uh, I learned from an early age that. As hard as you work and as good as you are, that those two things don't guarantee success. They don't guarantee that you're you're going to achieve your goals. But the other thing I learned, maybe more importantly, is that if if you do work hard and if you give it everything you have, and, and you're really the only one who who knows if you've given it everything, but if you have, there's there's some point in there that that has to be enough. Uh, you know, not everybody. Is going to achieve their goals, but but working hard and getting close it is not the worst thing. There's an integrity in that. Is yeah, there working absolutely. hard to get to get there. That's right. You know, just hearing to you, hearing you speak right now, you know, there, there are many people I think who put themselves in the position of working hard and things not working out, and then starting to blame themselves and right. saying, "What's wrong with me? Why isn't it working for me?" And I, I got a little bit of a sense from that in talking with you in the past, where you worked so hard and, and you fell, and you. You worked so hard again, you fell in the next Olympics, so you didn't cross the finish line. Did any of that ever start to creep into your mind and say, well, don't, doubting yourself or, um, or not? I started to, more so than doubting myself, I just wondered if it was meant to be at the Olympics. I just, I didn't know why it wasn't happening for me. Like I said, I was winning everything else and I didn't feel like I was overly nervous or it was too much pressure or any of that. I felt great and it, it wasn't happening. So. You know, I never really knew why. I started to wonder if it was going to happen or if it was meant right. to be. But uh, but deep down, I, I loved what I was doing. I think it's, I, it's really important to when you when you have a goal and when you set your sights on achieving something, to take pride in, in what you're doing. If you're proud of, of what you do, it's, it's number one. It's easy to work hard because uh, you, you love what you're doing. You're, you're proud of it, and 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 it becomes much less difficult to, to motivate, to get out there and get up every day and go at it. Now I saw the expression on your face in the video last night when you crossed that finish line yeah. and you looked up and you saw the world record and you saw that you had won the goal. But you know, what did that really feel like for you? I mean, after all the trials and tribulations, all the hard work, 16, 18 years, skating maybe since you were three or four years old. Mm -hmm. So what was that really like when you crossed that? I, I, initially, when I first crossed the finish line, it was it was relief because I, I finally skated to my potential at the Olympic Games. 
after that, it, it, it's very, it sounds crazy, but it, it's very patriotic. Sure. You know, standing on that yeah. podium, it's nostalgic. You start to think about every coach you ever had, your parents and what they've given up to get you to that point, and your family, and, and all of it comes rushing back. It, it's, uh, you know, I don't know how long the National Anthem takes, maybe a minute and a half, two minutes, but I, I never in my life wished that it had more verses until that right. day. I wanted, to, I wanted to stay up on that podium. <laughs> well, you earned it. You should have stayed up there. You just mentioned uh, parents and coach. And when I interviewed Michael Rizzioni a few weeks ago, we talked about coaching. And we talked about the work ethic that his father instilled in him. Mm -hmm. uh, for you, how about maybe a coach or two that really sticks out in your mind and the role that that person played in your life? And again, you have already mentioned your parents, but let's talk a little bit yeah. more about that. Yeah, I mean, really mine does come. I, I had a lot of different coaches leading, you know, th from the time I was four until, you know, I started competing internationally. Um, my coach at the Olympics, who ended up being sort of my first and last coach, was for me my, my motivator. He was the one that made me believe that nobody could beat me. He, he, he knew I had physically what it took and he, he, he made me believe every time I stepped to the line that I, that I could win. But I, I always have to go back to to I think the way I was brought up with my brothers and sisters and my, my mom and dad. They, I was 12 years old skating my first national championship. Wow. And, and I was sure I was going to win this thing and one kid beat me, I got second place. And, and my dad, I'm, I'm crying, I cried and I couldn't believe this happened to me. And, and uh, I was kind of waiting for these magic words that my dad always would have for us. And he finally, we, after a six hour ride back home, he, he sat me down in the house and he he looks at me now and he says, Dan, he says, you know, there's more to life than skating around in a circle. Wow. And wow. <laughs> it's not really what I want to hear at that point. But literally 10 years later, when my sister would pass away and I would fall at those Olympics twice, I realized he's right. There is more to life than just going around in circles. It, it, it's not, you know, skating is what I, I did. It's right. not who I am or who I was. It's, you know, the, the things you learn along the way. That, that is who you are and what you take from those things.